All right, this will be, <laughs> sorry, let's get this craziness out of here. This will be hopefully shorter than before, um, than yesterday's video. So I just wanted to show you next steps after we get the rest of this done, or if you feel like tackling this, which somebody has, because let's just look. Um, okay, these are abbreviations. IJOTC, International Journal of Offender Therapy and Comparative Criminology. Um, uh, maybe I did the wrong book. SAJRT is Sexual Abuse, a Journal of Research and Treatment. And I need to make that not as special as it looks. Anyway, go back to normal. Um, so let me show you next steps how we're doing the coding. This is an initial pass at coding, which is probably all we're going to have before uh, before Puerto Rico, and that's fine. Um, but this is what we're doing. Let's say, actually, somebody's already been doing this, right? SHRT. Yeah. Okay. This is great. All right. Patience is doing kicking some ass and taking some names. That's awesome. <coughs> all right. So um, I'll pick something that looks like it hasn't been done yet, maybe. Uh, man, pay, patience, you're rocking it. Okay, so I'm going to, okay, Journal of Interpersonal Violence. Okay, let's let's check that one. So that's this one. JIV is Journal of Interpersonal Violence. Uh, I hope you can figure out the abbreviations. Some of them are standard. Some of them I just kind of worked out, so they might not be standard. Oh, nope, there's no stuff there. Uh, violence Against Women. Well, I mean, we, for this step, you need... You need these um, things in here. I don't know why that's missing. But anyway, violence against women. Um, it's over here, VAW. I mean, yeah, it's getting rocked hard. All right, you guys know what's going on, but I'm going to talk about this briefly anyway. Uh, so let's say I'll just start up here. I'll just uh, I'll re recreate the wheel. So starting up here, IJOTC. I think there should be another C there. Anyway, uh, International Journal of Offender Therapy and Comparative Criminology. So uh, if I was looking at this one right here, actually, I'll, I'll scroll down to the end. Maybe this hasn't been done yet, but it probably has been. Let's say I haven't quite finished this one. First of all, I would say, okay, um, this here, the issue, the issue isn't marked. But we have links, hopefully. Okay. All right, that's fine. I'm going to put a link in there for the issue just in case i mean it, it makes everything easier um so it's volume 27 march april so i'm just gonna uh march to april 2016 i'm gonna see if i can find the issue there it, it's really handy to have a link to that issue so it was march to april are the volumes the same as the issues for this one that sometimes happens man there's a lot of articles here and is that the case? Volumes and issues are like the same thing. Let's look at, did we put any notes here? Uh, no, but maybe volume 43 issue, November, December. Okay, that's good. Um, this fifth one here, I don't know what it is, but I mean, we've, we've got this, so. Oh, this is good. Pages 164, March through April. Volume 27, March through April 2016. Okay, I'm just going to make some note of that. Volume 27, March to April 2016. So I can link to something, and then I'm going to put that link to that. Oops, wrong one. Put the link in there. Insert link. I th didn't that happen? Ugh, it didn't happen. What, what's going on here? Copy this thing. Why didn't that work? Oh, maybe it was pasting with like a weird color. That's bizarre. All right. Anyway, uh, this will be handy when we need to go back and look at it. I mean, I'm glad we have the links to the articles, but knowing which issue it is could be helpful as well. So I'm going to go to this article and I mean, it's the thing that put it through where I was. So it's this article right here. Measurement of Adolescent Dating Violence, a Comprehensive Review. So it's a review, so that's okay. And maybe I should have a place to indicate that, but let's, for right now, we're in a hurry. We might have to go back and redo this, unless somebody wants to indicate this somehow. Um, no Comprehensive Compendium. 
So this is measuring adolescent dating violence. Uh, it's not clear which domain this is. It might be the individual domain. Um, so let's go with that. Maybe I need to have a way to indicate uncertainty as far as this goes. So we've got this guy right here. It's I5A1 for IJOTC. So let's say I go down here and let's say I'm, oh cool, the link is there. Oh, that's probably because I just pasted it. So let's say I'm gonna do this, so I put my name there and domain I is the individual domain. I think, oh, I do have some uncertainty. Um, I'm gonna say tentatively yes. I don't think it's necessarily, I think, well, I'm, I think probably yes. And then I'm gonna put tentatively yes, because it could be kind of the feminine thing. And I don't think it's victims. Um, and then AB, I'm trying to remember everybody by their initials. Okay, AB already indicated that they think author one is female, author two is female, author three is male. Um, now, we're not gonna do from contact because that's if we, we'll have to talk about who we contact, but we're gonna contact at least some of these people, at least the people we're unsure about, maybe lots of them. We're gonna email them and ask them if they would feel comfortable telling us their gender. We might make a little online survey or we might just email them and say, please reply to this. So we're not gonna fill that in, that's from contact. Uh, we don't know, like, it, but if I was filling this in, maybe, okay, like, De Nera Exner Cortens. Okay, John, sure. Lydia, sure. Those seem like a male and female name. So, but De Nera, I don't know what De Nera is. I mean, it seems kind of feminine, but I would, you know, I'd probably, okay, it's this one that I'm on. I've, art, so issue five, article one, I five, A one. I, I agree with this, but let's say I wasn't sure. I would put unclear. If I'm like, De Nera, what's De Nera? I, and it's probably a woman. But um, yeah, so there we go. There isn't a fourth author, so you just leave that alone. Anyway, that's what we're doing. So you indicate whether you think that, and probably work on gender or domain, but not both at the same time, like I'm kind of doing right now. Let's keep these separated a little bit. Uh, that's That gives us a bit of a stronger case for our analysis and stuff, our methods. But um, I indicated that I didn't read the article. We might have to like dig into it. I think probably this is the individual domain, just looking at adolescent offenders, which is fine. We're not avoiding looking at, uh, at adolescent offenders. We're just avoiding looking at articles that are defined by having child victims. Now I have this thing here. Um, I put this new thing, CV. So, and it's for all three of them. Like it, I could choose CV, child victims, for any of these. And that's to say, like, basically, this isn't appropriate for us right now, but I think this is a child victim thing. And you don't have to put it for all three of them. But if you find something that is almost totally about child victims, that doesn't have a significant component that fits our, um, our, do our three domains, then you would choose at least for one of these child victims. I mean, you don't have to do it for all three of them. If, if even one of them says child victims and the rest are left blank or something, or you can use child victims and fill in the other ones if it's a mix of stuff in the research. Anyway, the child victims is something I put in there so we can come back and look at that because I think later we might wanna make a second pass at the data and recode everything, including uh, stuff that is about pedophilic or child molestation type research that does focus on child victims. Um, I don't know, I didn't look at this article. So, uh, I think it's possible that this is child victims because adolescent offenders, we'll have to double check. Um, it might not actually be about the victims. It looks like it's just about creating a measure to talk about adolescent perpetrators, but uh, I, I don't think it's a victim thing. I would just, I would just say like, yeah, no. Although I might put child victims there because maybe, I mean, 
if you have an adolescent offender, they usually have offended against child victims. But the article doesn't look like it's about the victims, so I'm probably just going to say no to that. All right, so that's what we're doing. So either do the domains or as AB and patients have been doing crap. Who's AB? Okay, I know these things. I'm just in a big hurry. I got to get to class in a few minutes. Um, do either the either the author gender or the domain. And if you're going to do them, or if you did do them, please put your initials. And this is important for us to go back because we're going to have questions about the data. And the person who did this will say, okay, what were you thinking when you did this? Or when you did all your stuff, what kinds of rules were in your head? And then we can go back and figure out what happened, which is critical. It's not a guilt thing. It's not, oh my God, you screwed up. This is every single research project ever. You need to be able to go back and track down who entered the data um, but it's because it's for data integrity. And of course we try and tweak our methods and make them all super awesome. We might want to make a second pass at this and have multi have other people not knowing what, like say patients said about this person's gender or about this, um, or you know, Chloe said about the domain. We might want to go have a second or third pass and have a separate pair of eyes independently make a judgment of that thing and then calculate some uh, statistics for inter-rater agreement, which is extremely common and could strengthen our case. Maybe we'll need to do that. But anyway, that's all I have to say. I don't think you need anything else in this video. Let me just stop it here.